Now let's discuss Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, as Al Amin, that is the trustworthy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Mu'minun, chapter number 23, verse number 8, and Surah Ma'arid, chapter number 70, verse number 32. وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِأَمَانَاتِهِمْ وَعَهْدِهِمْ رَاعُونَ And those who fulfill their covenants and their trusts. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he was known as Al-Ameen, that is the trustworthy, by his enemies as well as by his friends. Once a strife broke out at the time of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, there was a huge flood that had almost destroyed the Kaaba. So, the people, they started arguing regarding the placement of the black stone. Who will be the one who will place the black stone in its proper position? So later on they agree that the first person to come in the precincts of the Kaaba, he will decide on who will place the black stone. So it happened so, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he was the first one to come. So the people, they cried out, al Amin. That is the trustworthy has come. He will deal with justice. So the Prophet, peace be upon him, asked the people to get a huge sheet of cloth. He placed the black stone in the center of this cloth and he asked the people from the tribe to hold this piece of cloth. So all the people, they held this piece of cloth. They lifted it and the Prophet, peace be upon him, he picked up the black stone himself and placed it in its proper position. This was how our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, with his hikmah, with his wisdom, he prevented the tribes from going at war. This was the hikmah. This was the wisdom of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he was known as Al Amin, that is the trustworthy. Even his enemies, they wanted to kill the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. But yet, they entrusted their things to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. When the Prophet, peace be upon him, he migrated to Medina, he told his cousin Ali, may Allah be pleased with him, to return the things that the Quraysh had entrusted to him. Imagine these very people of Quraysh, they wanted to kill the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. But yet the Prophet, peace be upon him, gives back the things that these enemies had entrusted to him. He returns back these things. This was the trustworthiness of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He was known as al Amin, that is the trustworthy even before prophethood. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, when he went to Taif, in hope that people will listen to his message. In Makkah, the Prophet was tortured and was persecuted. So he went to Taif so that the people will pay heed to his message. But unfortunately, the people of Taif started pelting stones at the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. To the extent even the children, they started pelting stones at the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And drove him out of Taif. When the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he was bleeding profusely to the extent that his feet were soaked in blood. An angel comes to our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and asks him that, O Prophet of Allah, if you wish, I can crush the tribe of Taif between the two mountains. What would be our reaction? If someone had tortured and persecuted us so much, we would want them to be destroyed. But the Prophet, peace be upon him, he was far-sighted. He tells the angel, that do not destroy them. For perhaps their generation, they will believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at the mercy of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He was the liberator of humanity. He showed mercy to these very people who had pelted stones at him. This was the mercy of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He was a rahmatul alameen. He was a mercy for the entire humanity. And during the final sermon, our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he asked the Sahaba that, have I delivered the message? So the Sahaba, they say, yes, O Prophet of Allah, you have delivered the message. The Prophet, peace be upon him, says, Allahumma fashhad, O Allah, bear witness that I have delivered the message. I would like to emphasize 
that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he is the best role model for us. Let our lives be touched by the life of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. If our lives are touched by the life of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, then we will be successful in this world as well as in the hereafter. Therefore, let's resolve. Let the life of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, live again in our lives. Let his aim be our aim. Let his objective be our objective. Let his achievement be our achievement. Let his example be our example. Let his goal be our goal. Let his purpose be our purpose. Let his character be our character. Let his conduct be our conduct. Let his target be our target. Let his destination be our destination. Let us passionately involve in learning every aspect of the life of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he liberated humanity from slavery, from oppression, from idol worship, from decadence, and brought them into the light of Islam. One man alone, with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, transformed the Arab barbarians into torchbearers of the world. We love, we revere, we respect our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. But only and only if we read his seerah and study the seerah of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, it will have an impact on our lives. Therefore, I urge all the brothers and sisters to read, study the seerah of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. If we read and study the seerah of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, it will bring about an internal spiritual revolution. This internal spiritual revolution, it is very important. Humanity today requires this internal spiritual revolution. The Ummah today is in decadence. The Ummah is suffering today. Let us resolve that we will read and study the seerah of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And if we read and study the seerah of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, if we implement the teachings of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, we Muslims, we will be on top of the world. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may he give us a sound and pure heart. And may he help us to carry on the mission, to carry on the vision of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him the liberator of humanity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Hazab, chapter number 33, verse number 40, مَا كَانَ مُحَمَّدٌ أَبَا أَحْدٍ مِّنْ رِجَالِكُمْ وَلَكِنْ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ وَخَاتَمَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ بِكُلِّ شَيْنَ عَلِيمًا And Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he is not the father of any of you men, but he is the messenger of Allah and the seal of the prophets. And Allah is all-knowing, well-acquainted. I would like to end my talk with the quotation of Edward Gibbon a famous British historian of his time. He says that the greatest success of Muhammad's life was driven by sheer moral force without the stroke of a sword.